Hi, Kerry here again with uh, Best of Us Investors. For those of you who have been to my channel before, you know that I'm a long-term investor. I like to have coined the phrase that I'm a lottery ticket buyer. I buy stocks that I think are going to be worth a lot more than they are today, 10 years from now. Uh, and I basically am focused on three very growth areas. One is that in biotech, because I think the most important thing that's happened in my life of 77 years was the coronavirus. And our country and the rest of the world woke up that our health care system is broken and we shouldn't be focusing on health care. We should be focusing on health cure. And as a result of CRISPR and genome editing and genome sequencing, we were able to find a vaccine for the pandemic in record time. What usually took six years took six months. And this is going to have ramifications in the future. I also believe that we have discovered that our supply chain is broken and we are going to have to correct that. And I believe that the world that you and I live in relative to the internet is about to change relative to the metaverse. So I look for stocks that are going to benefit from this change that is occurring and then bet on them in the future. What I don't know, and I've been asked by my tribe, we meet every Friday afternoon and discuss the market, what are these biotech stocks that we're buying worth? What are they going to be worth in the future? How are that how is it going to be marketed? How is CRISPR and Editus and and Caribou and Invade, how are they all going to come through this and what are they going to be worth 10 years from now or five years from now? And I really didn't know. I subscribe to a, a news source, an investment source, Jeff Brown's. Uh, he, uh, I like his, his uh, information called Bleeding Edge. And he came out with a article just yesterday and it says a massive deal around CRISPR genetic editing technology. And what this is doing is answering part of the question that I have been asked. What is Editus worth five years from now? Who is, how is it going to be marketed? How is this genome technology going to be marketed? And will it be through Editus? Will it be through some other company? How is it going to happen? I really don't know, but I think I've just figured out how some of them are by the article that Jeff shared with me. And I want to share that more article with you. But I first of all got to tell you, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just here to educate and inform you. And I'm here to help you achieve three things. Number one is to make good financial investment decisions. And I want to preface that by saying long-term investment decisions. Secondly, to teach you how to keep more of what you make and understand our tax code. And third and most important is to make a difference, to build family wealth. That is to say, to leave this earth with more wealth than your father left you or your mother left you so that your children and your grandchildren and great-grandchildren can have a better life because of your activity in the stock market. But first, I'm not your financial advisor. I'll be right back with you and we'll talk about where are these genome editing stocks going to pay off and who, how are they going to pay off. Be right back. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, Jeff's article focuses on a company by the name of Man Mammoth Biosciences. And uh, the first sentence says, early stage company Mammoth Bi Bi Biosciences just inked a 600 and $91 billion deal with Vertex Pharmaceuticals. As I read the article, I think Jeff made a mistake or whoever wrote this article made a mistake. And it's not a $691 billion deal. It's a $691 million deal with billions coming in the future. What this article goes on to say, and first of all, Mammoth is a private company. It is co-founded, or one of the founders is Je Jennifer Doudna. Jennifer and uh, Emmanuel Carpentier won the 
uh, Peace Prize um, of last year for science for their work in CRISPR. Jennifer owns several companies that are doing genome therapy, and uh, Emmanuel owns a Swedish company, I believe it is, under the name of Editus. Jennifer owns part of Mammoth, and she also owns part of Caribou, and they deal with the the uh, therapy driven by CRISPR, in many cases, Cas9. Now, Meredith, or Mammoth, has developed a different means of using CRISPR, and in essence, what it does is it has the ability to go to smaller parts of our cell population to make corrections in any mutations that might exist. So what this does is what Mammoth is doing is expands the CRISPR-Cas9 into an even broader function. I, I tried to kind of process this, and what I would say is, let's say we have dirty hands, and our hands had some sort of chemical or, or oil or something on it. The first process we would do is go put our hands under some running water and try to wash them. And we'd find that we really couldn't get them clean, so we'd add some soap to it. And that's a surfactant that breaks down the oil. This is CRISPR, okay? And we would wash with that soap and then, but, but let's say we had some other form of soap that even got in deeper to the chemical that was on or the oil that was on our skin and it penetrated deeper and removed it more completely. That's how I envision the next step that Mammoth has made. So what, okay, so with that being said, why is Vertex interested in them? Well, what Vertex basically did, they're a large pharmaceutical company. They came to them and said, look, Mammoth, we like what you're doing. We want to give you $41 million today to help you advance further in what you're doing. And then we will pay you up to another $650 million if you hit certain two therapy plateaus, milestones, they called them. So <clears throat> they've come to, to Mammoth and say, here's $41 million to finance your further research research. If you hit these plateaus, and what I suspect they are is stage one or stage two uh, trials, we'll give you another $650 million, okay? That's, that's a lot of money, but it's really not a lot of money. It's not something that we can go home and say, okay, we're going to be millionaires as a result of that. But what they then say is once, if you hit these plateaus and you create this therapy, this genome therapy, using your uh, CRISPR, Cas, whatever, maybe it is Cas29, I don't know, uh, we will then license it and pay you royalties and we will market it. This is now worth not millions, this is worth billions, okay? So I look at that, I don't own Mammoth, I don't have access to Mammoth because it is a private company, but this is how I see that Editus, Caribou, um, uh, Invate, the other genome sequencing companies that I do own are going to potentially be marketed. I used to believe that they, in fact, would not be marketed through existing pharmaceutical companies. They would become a marketing company of their own. So this has opened my eyes to say, okay, what I'm looking for is a buyout, potentially a buyout. At least that's the way Mammoth is going. And Mammoth is owned or a major contributor to it is Jennifer. Jennifer also owns a major contributor to Caribou. I believe she may still have some interest in Editus. So that is where I see this going. The next question then comes is, what kind of time frame are we looking at here? And when, when will this be 
When, when will I get a notice from my doctor that says, Carrie, based on your past history that your mother died of cancer, your father died of cancer, and, and your daughter died of cancer, and what, when will I get the notice that says, hey, come down to the clinic here, and we want to genome sequence your, we want to sequence your genome. We want to look into the map of your body and see if you have mutations like apparently your, your relative, your mother, your father, your daughter did of cancer. And we want to introduce you to this therapy that is, has been developed by a company called Mammoth or maybe it's a company called Editus. And we want to put a needle in your arm and take that genome, um, problem out of your body so that you don't die of cancer. Okay, how far off is that? Well, we got to go through that. We got to be able to prove that in fact it works. Somebody's got to have a needle in their arm. That's going to take probably at least three years. Okay, or that it will get to the point that we recognize that's what's coming and there's a flood of money that says I want a part of it. And then I believe that my editus, my, my, um, my other genome therapy stocks will skyrocket. How much? I don't know. Uh, editus right now sells for or $37 a share. It has been as high as $75 a share. That's almost a 2x. Do I believe it could go if in fact it could create, it, it could cure, sickle, take sickle cell anemia or some form of cancer out of someone's body. Do I believe it could be uh, a $370 stock? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that would be a, 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 a 10X. Do I believe it could be a $3,700 stock? Yeah, I do. If it could take text cancer out of my body, you bet I do. What, I mean, can you imagine the savings to our our country for medical care, if all it took was a needle in the arm, well, what is that needle in the arm going to cost? I don't have any clue. But if I'm an insurance company, would I be better off paying for a needle in Kerry's arm or paying for his cancer care that we're we're on the line for um, in 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 ten years? I think the insurance company is going to pay for it if if. If, if it could cure cancer, what about heart disease? What about Alzheimer's? What about they are genetic uh, mutations? So if they can be cured, is a pharmaceutical company, is Pfizer, is Eli Lilly, is, is Abbott going to step up and say, hey, I'll give you $42 million today, and if you get through stage two, I'll give you another 600 million, and then I'll give you a royalty off of this for, for, in, in, for, for all time. Yeah, I think that's where this is going. So I want you to read this article as well. So, but you, I don't want to in, require you to subscribe to, to Jeff's, uh, Jeff Brown's, uh, or, yeah, Jeff Brown's uh, edit, Bleeding Edge. So. I'm going to put it on my uh, di uh, my Discord. I, I have put it up under Insights. So if you want to get access to that and other articles that I'll be putting there that Jeff shares with me and some of the other people that I subscribe to shares with me, and if you want to come and talk about this on Friday or any Friday with our Zoom call with our tribe, you go to Best of Us Investors, give me your email address, and your name, and I'll send you an invitation to our Discord. Now, the way the Discord works is uh, every month, first of every month, we bill the people in the Discord $10 a month. Also, you will see, uh, get access to all my, my portfolio that I manage under this YouTube channel, and you'll get notifications of any trades that I make. If that's good for you, no, I, th I think I can make you $10 a month, but if that's good for you, do it. But we don't bill to the first of the month. So you've got, what, today is the 18th. You've got 12 days or thereabouts that you can watch it for free and see, see what you think. 
And if, if uh, you don't want to be a part of it, that's okay too. I'm not here to make money off you. I'm here to do three things. One, help you make a better investment decisions. And again, I want to share with you that it's not swing trading <clears throat> and it's not day trading. It's long-term trading. I'm buying lottery tickets. I'm looking for the big win. If that fits your style, okay. I was just talking to a tribe member yes, or today, and he said, I looked at some of your stocks on Schwab, and they have them rated D and F. Yeah, they will, because they're not making any money. And Schwab doesn't dig like I do. They aren't looking for the lottery ticket. They're looking for the sure thing. They're going to tell you to invest in Amazon, Google, and Apple. And I agree with that. That's where 50% of my portfolio is. But I want that other 50% to be involved in genome sequencing and genome editing. I want it to be involved in 3D printing because we've got to bring our supply chain back to the United States. We've got, we're, we're our, our national security is in jeopardy right now because we can't get semiconductors. Come on. And then I want to be a part of the metaverse because what I see happening there is what happened in 1998 when somebody said, Gary, are you familiar with the World Wide Web? What? What's the World Wide Web? I just said to somebody having coffee today that we're down at the beach and I go walk on the beach and then come up and stop. I said, uh, are you familiar with the metaverse? And he said to me, and this was an intelligent individual who invests in the star market. Are you familiar with the metaverse? And he said, the meta what? Huh? Okay. That's the same response I gave in 1989 when someone said, are you familiar with the World Wide Web? And then two years later, they put me in front of a computer and said, you're going to have to learn how to use this. I said, I don't need to do that. I'll hire somebody to do that. Now I know how to do it. Okay, that's my take for the day. That's, I want you to read this article. Give me your name, your email address, you know the gig, and uh, I want to share this with you. Okay, talk to you again tomorrow. Going, um, let's see, what are we doing today? Uh, gonna ride my bike around the, the parks and the trails, and uh, we gotta go into Destin and um, do some Christmas shopping. Talk to you tomorrow.